Yes. Yes I know that the biggest advantage of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers is refueling every 25 years and unlimited nautical miles. Over the last 70 years, nuclear-powered ships have become a symbol of a superpower. The Soviet Union started the trend of nuclear-powered surface ships with its icebreaker called Lenin. They were also prolific atomic submarine builders after falling behind the US, which had pioneered them. Like most powers of that era, the US also wanted to experiment with nuclear propulsion for surface vessels. They built the USS Enterprise, world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. She displaced 90,000 tons had eight nuclear reactors and was said to be overpowered, capable of generating about 280,000 shaft horsepower, more than the Nimitz-class carriers that followed, which produced 250,000 shaft horsepower. The French were late to the game with their much smaller FS Charles de Gaulle, which is a 42,000-ton aircraft carrier with nuclear propulsion. To be fair, the Soviets did try to build a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier named the Ulanovska. Sadly for them, their country ceased to exist halfway through the construction, and the ship was scrapped on the slipway. But, we have all seen tons of documentaries why nuclear power makes sense. It is costly, but it reduces the refueling needs. That means a 100,000-ton Ford-class carrier just needs fuel for her jets, and food for her crew. It reduces the fuel transfer needs by a massive margin over her life, meaning that she is less reliant on tankers than the carriers that came before her. But there is one critical thing we are missing that uniquely makes nuclear propulsion ideal for aircraft carriers. Fuel consumption increases a lot at higher speeds, and it increases exponentially as we try to accelerate to even higher speeds. The efficiency of Vartzilla diesel and gas marine engines ranges between 42% to 52%, that is 52% of the fuel's energy is used to move the ship it is in. Formula One cars with their massive hybrid systems use around 55% of the fuel's energy to move the car, and they are the most efficient internal combustion engines. As speed increases, sedu frictional losses means more of the fuel's energy is used to just run the engine, decreasing the efficiency. The frictional losses at a ship's scale within an engine will be massive, means more and more fuel will be burnt just to keep the engine running at higher speeds. But an engine's internal friction losses are nothing compared to the friction between the ship and the ocean and air. As the speed increases so does the drag from the ocean in the atmosphere. This basically means that a ship's fuel burn increases a lot for minor increases in speed. I was able to find a great dataset to visualize this. A chart makes visualization so simple. Based on my rough calculations, for a 60,000-ton Iowa-class battleship, increasing speed by 2 knots from 16 to 18 increases fuel consumption by 28%. At the top end though, increasing speed by the same 2 knots from 28 to 30 increases fuel consumption by 45%. As I said, the same increase in speed has a much higher fuel consumption penalty at higher speeds due to the friction losses within the engine and from the ship to the ocean and air. Okay. I understand the Iowas are a 1930s design with inefficient power plants and hull designs by today's standards. The increase in fuel consumption will be lower for a modern design, but then it will still rise exponentially. Now, the USS Enterprise displaces over 90,000 tons, USS Nimitz and USS Ford classes all displace over 100,000 tons. Their fuel consumption penalty will be even higher as the speed goes up. Honestly, it is environmentally friendly that these ships are nuclear-powered. But this is still not the entire story. Aircraft carriers, unlike commercial freight haulers don't get to pick the most efficient speed, and sit at it for the entire deployment. Aircraft carriers, like the name suggests carry aircraft and have to do air operations. I can see a few of you have a eureka moment right about now, just don't run around naked like Archimedes. Aircraft carriers need to spend long periods of time during a day at high speed to generate enough wind on their deck for optimal air ops. Every knot they can add to the aircraft's takeoff speed at launch, adds more fuel or payload to a sortie. It's in an aircraft carrier's best interest to sail as fast as possible, as long as possible. They generally spent a considerable amount of the day sailing at 30 knots if not higher. The amount of nuclear fuel needed to power a single Ford-class carrier is far less than conventionally powered carrier burning upwards of millions of liters of fuel just to keep up. Plus imagine the number of tankers needed to supply the conventionally powered carrier and their fuel consumption. It is cheaper to have nuclear-powered aircraft carriers simply because of the energy density of the nuclear fuel. Plus, 
Given the energy density, it takes far less fuel to maintain much higher speeds and the weight and drag penalty at higher speeds is not too costly to pay. I appreciate that you tuned in and watched this video. Make sure you check out our website battlemachines.org, subscribe to this channel, and share this video with everyone.